Michael, 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 Michael. Hey, buddy. Are you ready to get into some really sick, demented stuff? That's exactly what I'm here for. <laughs> All right. This, this, this. Courtney's got some serious stuff that makes you want to scratch your head. She's all yours for the next 20. Courtney, I don't know how you don't have PTSD over this. I really don't. Oh, my goodness, Arrow. Uh, it is – it's a story that defies logic and is so gruesome you would really think it had to be made up. How? I mean, the, the thing is is that – I mean, that, that's the one thing in, in listening to the podcast is that it's like how, why, where, what happened? And then and, – but that's what the thing about this podcast is you take us there. Yeah, so, Arrow, uh, I work at KT Studios, which is headed up by Stephanie Lidecker, and she and I have been to Piked In many times starting years ago. And it started way – when the case, I mean, no one had been arrested, nothing else. And we kind of went in search of the why or just wondering, how is it possible the largest massacre in Ohio's history? And so over all these years, we've been able to speak to so many people and just fold back the layers and layers and layers leading you know, to the why and the how could this happen? And it's, it's yeah. I mean, it's four crime scenes. 32 gunshot wounds, eight family members dead. I mean, I'm here in Carolina. They do some crazy stuff down here, but nothing like that. Yeah, it's, you know, the largest criminal investigation. It really was, and it was it was overkill. Some of the victims were shot as many as nine times. Um, and so it really was fueled by rage, and there was speculation at the beginning that it had to be a focused, whether it was the mob or black ops or, yeah. you know, because it was so, it's really incomprehensible and cut to two years after the murders, a local family is arrested. You know, there's a killer family behind this mom, dad in their forties, two sons in their twenties look as normal as you or I. And, you know, two mom and one of the son they have pleaded out and are admitted murderers or conspirators and the other two are standing trial mm. how, how do you find air to breathe when when this continues to unravel because it seems like that every every day you turn a new page i mean they, at least that's what i'm getting in listening to the podcast you know it, it's been very interesting this particular season um, which follows George Wagner the Fourth's his trial. So this is the first trial after you know five years, and so through this process, a lot of details are unfolding as they come, and it's kind of just piecing everything together. And and what's been particularly interesting as you know we've been flying back and forth to Pike County to be in the courtroom for this a lot of people we've either spoken to or have heard about over the years have come to bear and either are witnesses or are talked about. And so it's kind of interesting. It's a fascinating to see all of these connections and how they manifested and created this web for lack of better word. Well, in episode number four, you, you know, you, you go into an alternative theory and, and, and so, and, and it's something to do with a demolition derby and listeners are gonna have to listen to it. But, but I mean, but I mean, yeah. all of a sudden it's like, Whoa, I thought we had this, this figured out. And all of a sudden, Whoa, there's, there's a twist. Mm hmm. Well, the, I mean, and, and listen, the, what the motive appears to what the prosecution is stating for its case is that it was over custody of a shared toddler yep. between murderer son in his 20s, Jake Wagner, and Hannah Mae Roden. However, that, again, is the prosecution's case. The defense has not made their case um, uh, for in defense of George Wagner IV, so who knows what they will say. And you bring up the demolition derby. Yeah, there had been death threats against some of the Roden rodent boys at a derby as you said there was there was a lot looked into every avenue these investigators went down is this based on family members or two families that got too close together and all of a sudden something just finally cracked i i don't know that i'd say finally cracked because that would imply some level of spontaneity to right, me right and matriarch angela wagner um, and the other Wagners spent 
months, Arrow, months and months and months um, shopping for this murder, making wow. homemade silencers, mm -hmm. stalking their victims both online and at their homes and seeing where are the security cameras so they can take them out buying this is the most terrific detail or one of them to me buying phone jammers so that if anyone wanted to call for help in their home they would not be able to holy cow this sounds like a they video game this this, this isn't a movie yeah. it's a video game i mean i mean that's just no, it, it's like you know collecting all the different uh, items so that you can make your way through that game that's right i mean it really just defies humanity really one, one, um, one, of the, one of the things that you bring up on your show that, that um, is, is the length of the podcast. It, is it because there's so much information and it's so heavy that you guys as writers and producers, you said, you know what, let's give it to them a little bit at a time so that we don't, we don't tire them out. I mean, it's perfect timing what you do with each episode. Oh, I really appreciate that. Um, honestly, Arrow, it, it kind of comes out as we find it. I mean, this has been... A many years journey yeah. that we have all been on personally so um yes and no a lot of it we're finding out and then we say oh my gosh well listeners need to know about this new person <laughs> who has this new connection you, you know it it really has evolved we initially back in 2019 did a documentary for uh nbc universal we have since done you know four seasons of the podcast and to your point it's it's new information new people new connections uh keep presenting themselves this this is you know the the onion that won't unpeel yeah yeah but you know what's really interesting about this courtney is the fact that you know there was there was once a time when if it wasn't on the front page of the newspaper everybody forgot about it and with your podcast you're showing people that hey look there is a continuation it's still happening and and there one day we hope to have an answer here i mean you're bringing reality directly to the front seat of our car yeah no that's that's exactly right that after the initial spark there has been incredibly little national coverage, incredibly. If this happened in Beverly Hills and eight members of one family were slaughtered by a killer family who lived a couple of blocks down, you're telling me we wouldn't hear about this all the time. Right. So, you know, that's actually also that plays into uh, giving it context of, you know, why didn't the media? Is it because it's in the middle of the country and not on one of the coasts or people have many theories, but we just have literally not been able to let this case go and to keep banging our heads against the why and the how. Do you feel like you've been called to do this? It's a tough question. That sounds grandiose. So I'm wary to say it, but what I can say is that it's in all of our DNA, all yeah. of us who have been, working there and speaking to victims family members and you know i think we all see it as a real um uh it's a real honor to be able we try and be really measured and take as great care and respect with the victims they couldn't deserve more in the world so um i think we are are careful yeah. not to inflict more harm i don't yeah, because I mean, poorly, as, but... as broadcasters, we're trained to do things, to be in the right place and to get the story and stuff like that. But so many times there in the in the 80s and 90s as broadcasters, they candy coated everything. We were sent to the fair to do the report or, or here's another four in a row without talk. And I'm going, I'm better than this. And so podcasting has given us that opportunity to share the story. Mm. Yeah, that's very true. And, you know, like you said, how it unfolds and it's just. It is how it has unfolded for us. It has taken that long. I mean, look, it took two years for an arrest, and that was with federal and local and just multiple agencies working together in tandem meticulously, and there's just... It's a lot. Again, the biggest, you know, it's, it's the biggest murder and uh, investigation in the history of the state. Yeah, because we're dealing with the Murdochs down here. And it and, it, and it's one of those where it was uh, everything that's been spinning around there. And all of a sudden it, it gets to the father. And it's like, well, how the hell did we get here? My God. And they just wouldn't let it go. Yep. Yep. 
So no, what true. what happens with this? I mean, this is an open door. And I, I know you talked about seasons and stuff like that, but this is an open door for you to have something to do for a very long period of time. Will you continue it in, in as they go to prison or the death penalty, things like that? How will you continue to allow this to grow? I mean, you've got our attention at hello. <laughs> you know, I, I think the these story will kind of tell itself. We're just we're at the first of two trials mm -hmm. with George Wagner. So there is plenty um, that we are learning and are sharing with listeners because a lot of stuff that was talked about or speculated and even that we couldn't report about because it wasn't substantiated by fact and didn't pass our legal lens. Now it is fact and coming out. So following this trial, there is plenty 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 to talk about and i think honestly to satisfy people who have been on this journey of discovery you know here's here's where the answers are coming out in court um and you know then it will be the father billy wagner who will be on trial next and past that it's you know it's impossible to know i think when it seems like the, again the story has been told the story has been told um yeah, but yeah. we do have uh excuse me, that we do have a documentary that is coming up that we are in the works on. Good. Yes. Does it shock you that there are still people that think that you got the wrong people in custody? I mean, listen, if you go through a court of law, everyone's innocent until proven guilty, yep. right? Yep. It, it gets harder for me to um, be in concert <laughs> with <laughs> that argument, to tell you the truth, but... You know, George Wagner, innocent till proven guilty. I think we can say that's not the case for confirmed, admitted murderer Jake Wagner and his mother, who, P.S., only got 30 years hmm. for agreeing to testify against her husband and son. Hmm. So the entire community isn't always a, a ray of light. I, I'm reading that, you know, that there's all it's got a dark history. I mean, you're stepping into this dark history. Yeah, the more we've, you know, both been there over the years and and just, you know, spoken with people and read about things, there has there is a history of corruption there. there it's no doubt about that. That that is fact. I mean, Sheriff Reeder, who was at the very beginning of this investigation, he is since in prison for non related uh charges, but for stealing from from the from the coffers mm -hmm. basically so you know and he was the sheriff who was investigating it that does that raise a question yeah good <laughs> you know <laughs> i would love to be in one of your guys's meetings you know it's, it's a i mean sitting there going okay well this is what the next one is about what what are we going to base this on doubt reasonable doubt mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I mean you know and it, it's really Watching the trial, um, both when we've been there and, you know, from afar, it's really, I'm so curious for when the defense really begins its case, because mm -hmm. we have not heard what is that reasonable doubt and how will it be laid out and how well will it, will it be laid out? You know, a jury's made up of human beings, all of them, and one may believe the story or, you know, who knows? So when you look in the mirror, do you see the investigative reporter or do you see a journalist? I see more in investigative, yeah. I would say. Yeah. yeah, I really, you know, I, I kind of love nothing more than, you know, going through files if I'm let in a room and finding, oh, here's a piece of something that doesn't match. Like they said it happened on a Tuesday, but really it happened on a Wednesday. Like, let's get to the bottom of what actually happened so yeah and i think uh, all of us at kt studios we really probe and it's a constant why and how and you know m trying to make connections you know not to make sense because this never will and, and but... the, yeah the reason why i bring that up is because i've always had this this dream that you know it, the, the person that writes the the crime story put them on the stand it's the same thing with investigative reporting what are you finding that they're they're ignoring and it's like okay we got to get courtney on the stand she knows something <laughs> well you know again that goes back to how interesting trial has been and seeing people take the stand that people we've literally spoken to but they were anonymous and we couldn't share it but we knew it and we're a little bursting at the seams of look over there you know and and but again our our legal is we're incredibly careful as we should be 
Um, and so we haven't been able to share it, but now it's coming to bear. And yeah, it's, it's a real interesting time. So how easy was it to get people to, to share the conversation? Because if you were to come up and ask me, I'd sit there and go, uh-uh, I'm not talking about this, uh-uh. The reception in Pike County across the board has been so staggeringly welcoming. Good. I mean, yeah, we literally, particularly Stephanie Lidecker and I went and knocked on doors and people let us into their homes graciously. Um, did it take a while for many to open up or want to speak? Absolutely. And there's never a pressure situation. Like there are, um, some people take that as a tactic mm -hmm. and I uh, can say we do not. And so, okay, maybe when you're ready, but it is, it's a good platform to learn the truth, to learn, you know, we're calling them the victims because of course they are victims of this murder, but the rodents are had robust lives and it's also a platform to share you know it's not just the headline these were human beings with love and you know intricate relationships and so for people to have a chance to let that be known um i think it's been a little cathartic for some people who have done that just to get that truth out versus the headline you're going to think I'm weird, but really it's because I'm a spiritualist. Um, I'm the type of person that grabs a journal and I go sit at a, at a crime scene and I write because I believe that we were spoken to from the other side. Have you done anything like that? Because, I mean, like maybe there could be an answer there. We have absolutely driven up and down. It's a clear path mm -hmm. where these eight family members were murdered. It's marked um though all the crime scenes are removed but yeah we have absolutely we have gone there we have stayed there and just yeah, as you said kind of breathed it in and yeah yep. um for whatever that did i don't know but i'm kind of with you with something or a feeling or a connection yeah, yeah, because I, I just totally believe in that because I, I sat in the closet where my wife's mother was was murdered and it was just that I felt like that I just needed to be there to write and, and just, just to, if, if she was trapped or whatever. But I mean, the, and so it's, it's not that I have a fascination with this. I just feel like that as writers, we also have to continue their story as well. Absolutely. And, and I'm sorry about your mother-in-law, Arrow, um, but it's absolutely a duty to what is their story and uh, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. I can't wait to talk to you more and more in the future, Courtney. This can't be the last time that we talk because as your story continues to grow, people around the world need to hear it. And you do need to be on CBS Sunday morning. I mean, they, they need to do a feature <laughs> on you guys doing this investigative reporting. I mean, absolutely. I'm, I'm down and especially to speak with you again, Arrow, for absolutely. sure. Will you be brilliant today, okay? Absolutely. You as well.